Okay, everybody. Good morning. Today. talk about the cellular level. That means we'll talk about the cells and the structure of the cell. So first we'll see how to define the cell. That means what is a cell. Okay? Then we'll see the structure of the cell membrane. Okay? Cell membrane gives the boundary of the cell and separates inside the cell from outside, right? You know that. Also, it gives the shape of the cell. So, boundary, shape, and separating inside materials from the outside. So, that is the, those are the functions of the cell membrane. We'll see the structure and functions of the cell membrane. Then we'll talk about the proteins. If you see the structure of a cell membrane, in the cell membrane, you have two types of proteins. Okay? We'll talk about those two types of proteins and their functions. Then we'll talk about the junctions. Junctions or joinings are the structures that hold the cells together, okay? intercellular junctions or joints. They attach the cells to each other. There are three types of cellular junctions are common. We'll talk about those three. Then we'll talk about transport across the cell membrane. Cell membrane is a semi-permeable membrane. <coughs> that means through the cell membrane, some chemicals can pass, but not everything, right? That's why it is called partially permeable or semi-permeable. So we'll see uh, how the chemicals cross the cell membrane or pass through the cell membrane. That is the transport across the cell membrane. Then we'll see the response of a living cell in three different types of solution. If we put a living cell in isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic, those three types of solution, how the cell will respond in those three different conditions. So those are the things we'll talk today. First, what is a cell? What is the definition of a cell? The cell is the smallest structural and functional unit of the living body or living organism. Now, why cell is the smallest structural and functional unit? You know that a single cell can stay alive. If I take some cells from your body and put in a petri dish and give, you know, nutrition and oxygen, I can keep the cells alive. Do you know that? Many researchers, they do that. They keep the 
cells, individual cells alive in a dish, right? You can do. So we know that individual cell can stay alive and function, okay? Another example, microorganisms, you know, bacteria, single cell, right? Amoeba, single cell. They can stay, they, they are alive. So that means that single cell can stay alive and function. Now, if I break the cell membrane, then what will happen? The cell will die. Okay? So that is the smallest living unit. <coughs> Human body has 50 to 100 trillion cells. So not million, not billion, trillions of cells. And more than 200 different types of cells are present in the human body. How the cells could be different from each other? They are different in shape, size, functions, uh, even color. So they're different from each other and more than 200 different types of cells are present. But one thing is common, what is that? All cells composed of mostly C, H, O, and N. You must remember in last class, I mentioned that 96%, more than 96% body mass is given by those four chemicals, right? Four elements. So our cells are mainly formed by those four elements, C, H, O, N. Uh, here you see a few examples how different cells could be different from each other. Top left, you see those two cells are fibroblasts. They produce fibers. You see around those cells, you see the fibers. So fibroblasts. Name is telling. It's connective tissue cell. Then top right, those two round red colored cells are red blood cells or erythrocytes. Same thing. Red blood cells are round, flat, and color is red because of hemoglobin, right? And red blood cells transport oxygen. So function, shape, color, size, all are different than fibroblasts. Now, below that, you see five cuboidal epithelial cells. The shape of those cells are cubical, like cubes, and they line the body surfaces. So they line the body surfaces. <coughs> then if you go down, in the left, long skeletal muscle cell, it has multiple nuclei. You see purple colored structures inside that, those are nuclei. So skeletal muscle cell is long, very long, and it has many nuclei inside. In the right side, <coughs> you see few smooth muscle cells. Smooth muscle cells look different than skeletal muscle cells. They are small and single nucleus inside. And the function of muscle cells is contraction. You know that muscle fibers contract. Below, bottom left, yellow colored cell is a fat cell, fat tissue cell, or adipose, adipose tissue cell. What is different in this cell? The nucleus is located peripherally, not in the center, attached to the membrane. You see the bottom. Uh, that nucleus is attached to the cell membrane. And inside the cell, you have fat droplets. And production of energy is the function of fat. You know that, right? Fat is a stored form of energy in your body. Probably some of you already know, right? So when our body needs more energy, fat is utilized, right? Metabolism of fat occurs. So, Function is different than others. Now, bottom right, you see that blue color cell has multiple processes 
extensions from the main body. This cell is called a macrophage and the function is phagocytosis. What is that? Engulf phagocytosis. So macrophage can engulf microorganisms or other antigens to destroy them. So immunity is the function, right? Protecting the body by destroying microorganisms or antigens. Right side, top one, a nerve cell or neuron. Probably you have heard, neuron is a nerve cell. And you see, it has multiple processes, one long process and few short processes, right? And the function is transmission of electrical signal. I have mentioned that that is the function of nervous system, right? Nerve signal transmission is what? Electrical signal transmission. Remember that? Very fast acting. So, electrical signal transmission is the function of a nerve cell. Then, bottom right is a sperm male sex cell. It looks like funny, uh, like a fish, very fish. It has a head, midpiece, and a tail. And by feeding the tail, it swims, it can move in the fluid and find the ovum or egg. So, function is reproduction, fertilizing the egg or ovum. So, here, just you see a few examples how the cells could be different in shape, size, right, uh, and their functions. Okay. Now, we'll see the structure of a typical cell. If you see a typical cell, it has a boundary, which is the plasma membrane or cell membrane. Okay, plasma membrane or cell membrane. It has a nucleus. And in between the plasma membrane and nucleus, you have cytoplasm. Cytoplasm. Okay. So those are three parts, right? Now, in the cytoplasm, you have two types of organelles: membranous and non. Membranous, so two types of organelles, okay, in the cytoplasm. <clears throat> so, what are the organelles? You have mitochondria. I'll just mention few because you have learned this in your intro bio. Mm -hmm. uh, don't spend too much time, just uh, briefly. So mitochondria is one, right? Around the nucleus, you have tube-like structures called endoplasmic reticula, like several tubes are connected to each other, and that is endoplasmic plasmic reticula. In shortcut, we say ER. Okay. Now, endoplasmic reticulum could be two, could be two types: rough ER and smooth ER. Okay. So rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Part of the endoplasmic reticulum or ER has ribosomes. For example, uh, this part has ribosomes attached. But these are the these dots are ribosomes. So that is rough. Okay. So on rough you have ribosomes attached. Okay. 
That's why it is called rough. Surface is rough. And the part that doesn't have ribosomes attached, that part is called smooth. Okay? So this is smooth, this is rough here. You have uh, another important organelle that is called the Golgi apparatus. If you see the Golgi apparatus, uh, it is like, you know, uh, flattened sacs, flattened membranous sacs uh, stuck together, one above another. So it's like this. These are the sacs uh, together, and both ends of those flattened sacs are expanded or wider, like this. The middle part is narrow, then expanded. Okay? So that is Golgi apparatus. Okay? You have other structures like centrioles, centrosomes, okay? uh, then uh, microtubules, microfilaments. We won't go into detail, just let's uh, briefly talk about the function of these. Mitochondria is called a power house. of the cell. Why it is called the powerhouse? Because most of the metabolism, cellular metabolism occurs inside the mitochondria and you already know metabolism produces ATP, right? You know that. So most of the ATPs come from mitochondria because inside the mitochondria most part of cellular metabolism takes place. So production of ATP is the function and that's why it is called the power house. Then uh, ribosomes. Ribosomes manufacture proteins. So protein manufacturing is the function. Uh, production of protein or synthesis of protein or manufacture of proteins is the function of ribosomes, okay? And after the protein is produced by the ribosomes, the protein molecules are sent inside the rough ear because ribosomes are attached to rough ear. So protein molecules will go inside the endoplasmic reticulum, rough ear. And what happens in rough ear? Rough ear is responsible for processing, further processing of proteins. Okay. That means what? That means modifying, <coughs> cutting. If the length of protein chain is too long, it will cut. Folding. Okay. So processing of that protein is the function of rough ear. So it will modify the protein if needed, cut it, fold it, all those things are done in, inside the rough ear. So ribosomes produce the protein molecules and then send, send inside the ear and then ear does this things. Then what happens next? That modified protein molecules are sent from rough ear to the Golgi apparatus. So Golgi apparatus receives the proteins. And inside the Golgi apparatus, what happens? Packaging of proteins. So that is the function of Golgi apparatus. Okay? What happens uh, here? The protein molecules enter into 
the Gaudiya apparatus and they go to the ends of those flattened sacs. They accumulate at the ends like this. Both ends and then the ends get detached from the main part and become round membranous sacs. So they get detached and form round membranous sacs. Now these are called hair cycles. So hair cycles are formed. And then what happens? The hair cycles move to the cell membrane. Come here. Move to the cell membrane. And then the rupture of the vesicle releases the proteins, protein molecules to the outside. And that process is called exocytosis, rupture and release of protein molecules to the outside of the cell. That is called what? Exo, exo means outside, cytosis, throwing to the outside. Exocytosis. Okay. So it is like you know a uh, factory. If you go to a factory, you already know factory produces what? Goods. Right? So ribosomes are like factories producing proteins, right? Protein molecules. Manufacturing proteins. Make sense? Okay. Then sending to another department. Okay. What is that department? Rough ear, right? And rough ear does what? Next step. Modify. Cutting. Folding. Okay? That is the processing. Okay? Further processing. And then rough ear sends the protein molecules to another section. What is that? Golgi apparatus. Make sense? And Golgi apparatus does what? Packaging, yeah, okay, and then you know after those things are done, packaging is done. What the factories do? They send to the through the truck, right? They load uh, in the truck and send to the stores, right? Mm -hmm. So, Gaudi apparatus will make bicycles and send the bicycles like trucks going to the store, going to the cell membrane and delivering it by exocytosis. Make sense? So protein molecules are getting out. So protein could be hormones or any other things. Uh, so that is how uh, you know protein is manufactured, processed, uh, packaged, and set to the outside of the cell. Okay. Now let's talk about the nucleus. It's a very important structure of the cell. Nucleus is called the power house. Nucleus is called the, uh, sorry, nucleus is called the, mitochondria is the power house, right? So nucleus is called the control center of the cell. Nucleus is the control center. <coughs> Why it is called the control center? Because in the nucleus you have DNA. Have you heard that? DNA in the nucleus. And DNA controls the functions of the cell, behavior of the cell. Okay? So functions and behavior of the cell, how that cell will behave, all those are controlled by what? DNA, right? And DNA are located inside the nucleus. So that is also the function of the nucleus. So what are the functions controlled by DNA? Uh, behavior of the cell. Yeah, behavior, how the cell will respond, right? Different cells behave differently, you know that. Different cells have different functions, right? Some cells like red blood cell has, uh, red blood cell has what inside? Hemoglobin, right? 
So the DNA will, you know, determine that synthesis of hemoglobin. Some cells secret hormones, right? So DNA will determine that this cell will produce hormone inside, right? So those functions are controlled by DNA, how they will behave. Anyway, so that's why it is called the control center. Uh, DNA is located in the nucleoplasm. So inside the nucleus, there is another round structure that is called nucleolus. Nucleolus. So nucleolus is inside the nucleus, this one. This is the nucleus, this is the nucleolus. And in between, you have nucleoplasm. So it is like another cell inside the cell, right? It has a membrane that is called nuclear envelope. Nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane, both are correct. And nucleoplasm. Plasm, like cytoplasm in the cell. Nucleoplasm and nucleo, nucleus. <coughs> And this membrane is called nuclear envelope. Okay, nuclear envelope. So three parts: nuclear membrane or envelope, nucleoplasm, and nucleolus in the center. Just know that <coughs> inside the nucleolus you have RNA, ribonucleic acid. R M A in the nucleolus. In nucleoplasm, you have chromosomes. Okay. Chromosomes are in nucleoplasm. And in the chromosomes, you have DNA. And in DNA, you have gene. Okay. So that is how <coughs> the genes are located in the chromosomes. So one more thing, just to know that nucleolus contains RNA and RNA produce ribosomes. Ribosomes produce protein, <coughs> right? You already know from there. Okay, so that is a typical cell and important organelles and their functions. Okay. Make sense? Everybody? Okay, let's quickly review. <laughs> okay. So a typical cell has three parts. Outer covering is the plasma membrane, right? That gives the shape, boundary, and separates inside from outside. Make sense? Clear. And then nucleus, right? Which is called a control center. Make sense? Because it has DNA. And a nucleus has three parts again. Outer membrane is called what? Nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane, right? That is the covering, and in the center, you have another round structure that is called what? Nucleolus, right? And it contains RNA. RNA produce? Here? Yeah. Okay. In the nucleoplasm, you have chromosomes. Chromosomes contain? DNA. DNA contain? Yes. Here? And the function of DNA, you already know, right? that controls the behavior and function of the entire cell, okay? So that's why it is called the control center, nucleus. Okay, then uh, these tiny dots are called what? Ribosomes, right? Remember that? And they do what? Synthesize protein. Synthesize protein or manufacturing of protein, right? Remember that, everybody? Okay, then 
ribosomes send the protein molecules to inside the rough ear, right? And rough ear does what? Processing. Processing means what? Modifying, right? If it is too long, the protein chain will cut and make give it good size, right? Appropriate size, folding. So those belong to processing, right? Then rough ear will send to the cardiac apparatus, right? Packaging is the function, right? And they will produce what? Vesicles, right? And vesicles will take the protein molecules to the cell membrane, right? And then will rupture by exocytosis. They will release the protein molecules to the outside of the cell. Clear? Okay. So, most of the metabolism occurs inside what? The mitochondria, right? Metabolism produces ATP. That means most of the ATPs come from mitochondria, right? By cellular metabolism. And that's why it is called the powerhouse. Clear? Okay. Now the last thing, the smooth beer. We didn't talk about that part. Just I'll mention a uh, couple of functions. Smooth ear. Lipid metabolism. And another important function of a smooth ear is detoxification. Detoxification. What is detoxification? You know that inside the cell, when metabolism occurs, some toxic chemicals are also produced. You know that? Metabolism produces toxic chemicals. We have talked about that several times. Okay? Uh, also, when you take like medicines, all medicines have more or less, you know, side effects. You know that. That means they have also some chemicals that can cause harm. So, those toxic materials are detoxified, neutralized inside the smooth ear. So detoxification is an important function. Okay? Uh, toxic materials are neutralized inside the smooth ear. So just remember those few organelles and their functions. This is a nice picture of a typical cell. But remember, this is a <laughs> drawing, right? So when we draw something for a book, right, we draw beautifully. But real cell is not like that beautiful. Okay, you want to see all these colored structures there. Okay, so yeah, it is uh, much more complicated. But you know, it's a nice picture to understand the structure of a cell. <coughs> now, cell membrane. If I take a small part of the cell membrane, like take the cell membrane small part, chop out, and see under electron microscope, very powerful microscope, but I will see, I will see the molecular structure of the cell, right, cell membrane. So let's see the structure of a cell membrane. Cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. These are phospholipid molecules. Okay, so this is one layer of phospholipid. This is another layer of phospholipid. That's why we say phospholipid bilayer. And in phospholipid bilayer, proteins. Protein structures are inserted. So, this is a protein in phospholipid bilayer. Also, the protein could be partially inserted like this. Okay. Some proteins pass through all through. Some proteins are deeply inserted but does not pass all through. Okay. This is phospholipid bilayer again. Okay. And some proteins are attached to 
this inserted protein like this. So these are proteins. Okay. Now if you see a phospholipid unit, it has a head part. So this is the head and a tail. Okay. Head part is called polar end. Tail part is called non polar. Okay, so polar and non polar. Now, head part likes water, loves water. That's why head part is also called hydrophilic. Hydro means what? Water, right? You know that. Hydro means water. And philia means what? Liking. Attraction, <coughs> philia, right? So head part loves water or likes water. That's why it is called hydrophilic. Hydrophilic part. Okay. So head part is polar part, which is hydrophilic. Tail part dislikes water. Okay. Hates water. So it is called hydrophobic. You know phobia, right? Scare. So, tail part is also called hydrophobic. Dislikes what? Okay. So now you tell me this entire part is hydrophilic or hydrophobic? Hydrophobic. Make sense? So, the water molecule cannot pass through this phospholipid bilayer. Make sense? Because this part doesn't like water. Will not let water pass through. Okay? So, water molecule will not be able to pass through the phospholipid bilayer. Is it clear? Okay. Now, the question is then how the water molecules or water soluble chemicals will pass through the cell membrane. This is a protein and inside the protein, some proteins, not all, inside some proteins, you have channels <coughs> like this, okay? Channel proteins. So, small water and water soluble molecules, since they cannot pass through phospholipid bilayer, they will pass through these channels. Make sense? So, proteins will allow the water and water molecules, soluble molecules to pass through it. Okay, so, now you know about phospholipid, now we'll talk about the proteins. Two types of proteins we see in the cell membrane. Some proteins, those are inserted in phospholipid, those are called integral proteins. This is also inserted, although it is not going all through, but it is deeply inserted. So these two are called integral proteins. Okay? So that is one type of proteins. And another protein structure that is not inserted in phospholipid but attached to the integral proteins, these are called peripheral proteins. So this is a peripheral proteins. Okay, so two types of proteins, integral proteins and peripheral proteins. Peripheral proteins can be also in the inner side or outside, outer side, inner side. So peripheral proteins, okay? So that is the basic structure of the cell membrane. Now, interestingly, there is a theory or model to define the structure of the cell membrane. What is that theory or model? It is called fluid mosaic model. This is interesting. When you see the cell membrane, this cell membrane under electron microscope, it looks like from the top a beautiful floor. Okay, nice beautiful floor, white floor, in which the proteins 
are inserted, that means the protein structures look like marbles. You know? So beautifully stones are inserted in the floor. So now you can think, right? Beautiful. So the floor in which the stones are inserted or marbles are inserted. Make sense? Now, uh, not only that, these protein structures change their configuration, change the shape. So now you think that you, you are looking at a beautiful floor in which there are marbles, right? Beautiful marbles, and they are moving. It will look beautiful, right? So it's like fluid since they are moving, right? So that's why it is called fluid mosaic theory or model of the structure of the cell membrane. <coughs> okay, so two types of proteins. Now I will briefly mention the functions of integral and peripheral proteins. Okay? So integral proteins have few important, very important functions. One is transport. helps in transport. I have already shown that to you here, that this is an integral protein, and this integral protein has a channel, so the molecules can, chemicals can pass through it. So that is transport. Another is acting as receptors. Some integral proteins act as receptors. And <coughs> acting as enzymes. Okay? So those are three uh, important functions of the integral proteins. Okay? Peripheral proteins have a couple of very important functions. I'll just mention two. One is cell recognition and another is cell junctions. So recognition of cells and forming cellular junctions or joints. They hold the cells together. So you need to remember the functions of the integral proteins and functions of the peripheral proteins. Now you uh, will see how the integral proteins perform those functions, how the integral proteins help in transport, acting as receptors, and acting as enzymes. So we'll see that, okay? First, <coughs> transport. You already got some idea, I have mentioned. You see two integral proteins in the cell membrane here. One has, in the left one, you see, the channel is always open. Always remains open. Make sense? So those molecules are smaller than the diameter of this passage or channel. They can easily pass through it. Make sense? Those are smaller, they can easily pass through the channel. Another type of channel, those are gated channels. That means they have gates. So not always open, right? Gate is usually normally closed. When needed, then the gate will get open. Make sense? To open the gate, you need what? ATP. ATP. Make sense? To open the door, you need to push. So, to open the gates of gated channels, you need ATP. But in both cases, you see the transport of chemicals or molecules are helped, uh, is helped by the proteins. So, that is transport to regular open channel or gated channel. Receptors. How integral protein works as receptor. This is a very important function. So, 
this is the cell membrane I'm drawing again and these are the proteins integral proteins right this is outside of the cell and this is inside the cell <coughs> okay and the outer part of these integral proteins those proteins work as receptors they have binding sites like this is the binding site in this one the binding site is like this in this one binding site is square like this okay so these are the receptor integral proteins now when you take a medicine or when a hormone wants to work on this cell if this is the 